Hey guys, VBad here with another VPlays, and we are in the Yak7 M82 because they're offering the Jack of All Trades deal right now. So we'll feature this aircraft, and I do have the Yak 3T, which proves I love you guys because I hated the Yak 3, and the Yak 3T looks like it's sacrificed even more of its capabilities just to get some bigger guns on it. So we'll also showcase that because it's in the bundle. Uh, I don't mind this plane. I think it was a perfect reward aircraft because as a reward aircraft, it kind of said, hey, here's an aircraft. Whoa, <laughs> buddy, that you can earn. Uh, that's a it's a nice plane to have, but it's not necessarily going to be surpassing any of the other aircraft at tier five. It's just going to be fairly unique uh, and a fun aircraft to pilot. So. It's a tier five. It's a oh, get ghost hippo. I don't know what that means. Okay, we'll help a little bit here. Shoot up a couple of the AA sites. I thought my buddy was coming over here, but it doesn't look like he was coming. There's ombre. Maybe this is what he was talking about. Trying to get on him. Looks like he's taking it into the vertical. He's in the zone. Nice. That's a bit of capture for us. Sweet. So there's only a little bit left on this one structure. Ooh, unfortunately we lost a ground attacker to a crash. So normally I don't advocate doing the gun thing, but... It's going to be worthwhile at this point since I am trying to escort my buddy here and mines are where battles are won and lost. The guns on this thing are a little bit temperamental. You have two 20s that overheat very rapidly and then a couple of an accompanying machine guns. So we're going to come in here and see if we can help out a little bit. Maybe get a fire. Not quite on that one, but in 16 seconds we'll have rockets. We might be able to finish that off. Fortunately, losing that one ground attacker really put us at a disadvantage for finishing this off. Two, one, and we got the zone. Nice, okay. Let's head over here. We managed to get fire breathing. We must have burned out what was left of that building. We are still at a massive disadvantage right now, but I am not in a dogfighting aircraft, so I am not going to be taking this thing into that type of a fight. I'm going to work along the periphery. We are actually a multi-role aircraft as a Yak-7 M82. Uh, the M82 is referring to this big old engine, which we're actually in relatively short supply, apparently. So they tried to kind of reserve those for... Uh, some of the more valuable aircraft. That's why we see the PE-2 M82. Uh, again, that's an aircraft that was featuring this particular engine setup. There's the heavies. Don't you do it clipping my tail like that. Let's see what we can do here maybe to get some of this capture. We do have a bit of versatility on this aircraft. We do have to be careful with the guns. They do overheat. We'll lose the accuracy. But we can burst down quite a few hit points in a single run here. We also have these rockets that are coming back up as well. I see you, Boomerang. Let's get the 20s on target. Almost, but not quite. I see you. We lit him on fire pretty easily, and they're both on low health. Two down, and now we're up another zone. So that's good for us. We're going to work our way over to the airfield now, which is not an area I'd necessarily want to be, but I think we may have split up the cluster a bit that was at the airfield initially just by sheer um, tenacity and waiting for the opportunities. I see the Yak-1 coming in on our ground attacker. He is... I think he's a tier... Four aircraft or not a tier four uh tier five aircraft let's see here get the 20s on target good hits he is injured and now he's dead okay 
I see a multi-roll P43 heading for our ground attackers again. I am trying to keep sinker, ship sinker safe over here. And engaging these aircraft is how we're going to do that. There's the hurricane. And the yak. And we're not finishing a lot of these aircraft off, but that's okay. Because you know what we're actually maintaining? Airspeed. And that's almost as valuable. We're at their spawn. I wasn't actually expecting anybody to respawn here, to be honest with you. Oh, he's going to burn us out. Did we take him with us? Uh, we might not have gotten him, but we definitely caused some hurt. So, we do have three zones right now. We may be picking up their mine. I'm probably going to make a hard right and see if I can counter at the mine a little bit. Now, ship sinker seems to be countering aircraft directly. Not necessarily the move I would make, but I'm not going to give him too much of a hard time. He's still relatively new. Tier 5 is all he's really got right now, and he's still working on voice comms, so... Uh, hopefully we can get him back into the channel so that way we can work with him a little bit and help polish up some of his skills. We did get the other mine, which is going to be really helpful. Would love to be able to take out that Spitfire, but in the meantime, we're going to go after this ground attacker. This human-controlled Baka Wolf aircraft. He may have bombs. We're going to go ahead and deviate a little bit. I see there is the Spitfire. Can we get him? Yes, that bought us some time and gave us a bit of the capture. Pulse in the 20s, keeping the accuracy up. He does have a tail gunner. We're going to have to be wary of that. There we go. Knocked him out. Bought us a little bit more time again. Here's another one of the same twin tail demon aircraft over here. It's such a funky looking plane. We managed to just get complete control of the skies. Gotta love air supremacy. And there we go. Conqueror kept this zone secure. That's what we were here to do and that definitely paid off. So, man, what a, what a great run this was. We are specialized in this platform. Everything is pretty much up to advanced, if I'm not mistaken. It's now squall line, but the game is over. We'll throw up a good old GG there. And we were number one on our team. So, uh, 12,680 personal points. I'll definitely take that win. And let's get back to the hangar and take a look at this aircraft in a little bit more, uh, a little bit more in depth. Um, I am running a very bare bones uh, crew on this because I'm I'm actually trying to <laughs> grind up experience for doing the crop dusting events that we typically are have been doing with the Black Crow Squadron. So I only have I actually have Rocketeer on this thing. I was hoping I might get lucky with these rockets, but I've been having mixed uh, mixed results. And then also Firefighter because it's always good to have Firefighter on some of these lighter fighter aircraft because you can just roll and put the extinguish some of the flames. Looks like we picked up another point though, which is great. That came as a result of this battle. And what we're running is we're running a very standard build. We're running a collimator. We're running the the lightweight wing frame we're running an uprated engine to give us a little bit more altitude performance because the engine doesn't burn out as quickly uh and i'm actually running the aerodynamic pylons because the rockets have very little beneficial effect i mean they can do some ground damage but i mean if you look at this it's like 3,000 ground damage with a a fairly quick reload it's like a 90 second reload it ain't bad but um it's nothing that I would want to put a lot of effort into. So if anything, I, w I keep the rockets off when I'm when I'm grinding this thing up to specialization. But once I specialize it, I go ahead and put on the aerodynamic pylons and then put the rockets back on. So that way it doesn't hurt it as bad. Because what this aircraft kind of suffers from is a limited altitude performance of only about 3,000 feet, which is typical of like a turn fighter at this tier. Uh, maybe a little bit more of a mid-altitude kind of multi-role. So it is falling into its category. But yeah, the M82, big radial engine right there. If you look at, you can pull up the PE2 M82 right here. Boom. It's the same engine style, right? And that's why it has that name. Instead of the typical Yak-7, which had a V, typical V-style, you know, automobile type engine configuration. Uh, so the Yak-7 M82 
relatively unique, interesting bird. The 20 millimeter cannons do some pretty decent work. And then we also have, oh, sorry, it's a single accompanying machine gun, which you actually see a little groove right here, which is nice for getting that chance of fire. 223 damage, decent enough. So yeah, this is the Yak-7 M82. Again, we'll look at the Yak-3 T. Uh, that's going to be a tier 7. I'll tease you a little bit. There's the Yak-3 T. Uh, the Yak-3 T is actually going to be a little bit yet less than the standard Yak-3 on its maneuverability, on its altitude performance, on its airspeed. It actually is going to be less in almost all categories with the exception of carrying a 37 millimeter hub gun with a decent range and accompanying 20 millimeter cannons. It kind of reminds me of the Key 88, except as a turn fighter. So we'll see how it plays out. I have yet to take this aircraft out. The nice bonus though is that they do give you a seven skill pilot with this this bundle. Uh, if this tier seven premium was was better, uh, we'll see. Again, I got to do the review, but you do get the option of getting a pilot as well. So that's a nice little change of pace. But uh, we were here talking originally about the M82. So I hope you guys enjoyed taking a look at this aircraft uh, and seeing how she does. I think it's a fine aircraft, but it's not something I would go out of my way to go get. So it's really going to hinge on what tomorrow's video, the Yak-3T, tells us. So I hope you guys enjoy the video, and as always, I'll catch you on the next one.